All right, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my animation workflow inside of Blender. It's a question I've gotten asked pretty often, especially in my other workflow videos, specifically the video breaking down my workflow through the two hit combo attack that I made. And then also in other animation walkthroughs like my Hulk animation walkthrough and then my Spider-Man animation walkthrough, I use the same cube blocking method. It's a workflow I use pretty often for body mechanics type of shots because it allows me to focus on the movement first and then think about the poses later. When I'm creating animation, that's the first thing I wanna start figuring out as soon as I possibly can is just how is this character or creature actually going to move? So this cube allows me to just simplify the process into one single object and then slowly layer on more and more detail to it. So what I've got here is this cube and I've animated a basic, I'll say this kind of a hit react. Um, that's kind of just what I've created here. Very simple animation, just imagining this character kind of falling backward and getting hit. Um, so what I wanna do is get the character to follow the cube. So I have this cube animated the way that I want. And now I wanna make sure that the actual animation or the actual character is attached to that animation. Um, and I'm actually gonna show real quick too how I actually got the cube attached to the actual, uh, or aligned I should say, to the actual character rig. So I've got the torso control and that's what I would want the cube to be aligned to. So if you can see, it's like my cube, you can see it's matched up. So what I wanna do is shift A, press the cube, and then I can kind of start scaling it. Now, what we need here, or really what makes this much easier is this global transform. So you can find this if you go to edit preferences and you can search transform or copy. You can see it here. So I actually have two tools. This is the animation copy world space. This is a plugin that I had downloaded, which allows me to do this. However, Blender added the copy global transform inside of Blender. So you don't actually have to download this add-on anymore. You can just make sure you enable that. And then when you do enable that, you can see it here in the animation tab when you press S to open up that menu. So that's what we need to make sure that we have turned on. So what I wanna do is select my control curve for the torso. I'm gonna to go to copy global transform, and then I'm gonna select the cube, and then I'm gonna hit paste. And you can see that's going to align it with that control, and then I can just scale it down and size it up as needed. And now you can see it's perfectly aligned with the torso control. So that's what we want. And then of course, if you wanna make changes to the cube, you would wanna tab into edit mode and move the individual points around rather than like rotating the cube because then that's gonna mess up your orientation. This way we can adjust things like the size. Uh, if we wanted to, we could add an edge loop like I did with the other cube and scale it in a little bit closer to the actual size and shape of our character's torso. And I'll go ahead and delete that. All right, so the next thing we need to make sure that we do when we wanna get this attached to our cube is we want to have the legs following the torso, exactly. So we get this sort of action figure type of movement on the character where we move our torso around and everything follows. You've probably seen that in my other workflow videos inside of Maya. So we basically wanna have the exact same setup for our character here. Same with the arms. The arms are currently in world space. So as I move this, you can see the arms are trying to keep their orientation. So they're not actually following the chest or the torso one-to-one. -one. So to do this, I'm gonna go to my side tab here and I wanna to go to item. Now I'm using the I animate rig for this and all of the rig attributes are in the side menu under item. You might be working with a different rig, but most rigs that you download will have the same sort of attributes there. Well, hopefully they do. Most rigs should have the ability to switch things like the arms from local to world space, the IK legs, to you know, follow things like the torso or stay in world space so they don't move around when you move the actual torso. So most rigs, you'll find those properties there. They might be in like the properties panel instead of this side panel, it kind of just depends. So you might need to search for them, but we have all the rig properties here for the rig. So the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that my feet are in IK still, but I wanna make sure that when I move the torso around, the feet are actually following the torso. So to do that, I wanna keep the exact same position that the feet are in. So I'm gonna go up here to the animation tab and I'm gonna choose copy on the global transform to copy that position. 
Then I'm gonna go back to item. I'm gonna go to my left leg here and I'm gonna change the torso parent switch to one. So it's at zero, which means this IK foot is in world space. So I'm gonna bring that to one. You can see it's gonna snap the foot to a different position and that's why we wanna make sure we copy the position before we change this attribute. So now all we have to do is go over here to the animation tab and just hit paste. So now our foot is in the same position and now if we move the torso around, that foot or that leg is following the torso, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna do the same for the right leg. I'm gonna copy the global transform, go to item, go to right leg, change the parent switch to one, go to animation, paste. And I'm just gonna work through this and make sure I get this character set up. So the last thing that we need to do is just fix the arms so they are in local space following the body. So we just need to do something very similar. I'm gonna to go to global transform and hit copy. And I'm gonna to go to item and I'm gonna to go to the left arm and what I want to change is the FK isolate for the left arm. So at a value of zero, it's in world space. At a value of one, it's in local space. And depending on your rig, the rig that you're using, these might be named something different. So in this particular rig, it's just called the isolate value. The rig you might be working with, it might be called like the world or local space switch. And just keep that in mind. You might need to fiddle around with your rig attributes to find the exact one. But here I wanna bring this to a value of one. I'm gonna to go to animation, paste. So now we've kept that same pose, but now if I move the control around, that arm is following exactly with the torso's movement. So I'm gonna do the same for the right arm. Copy, go to item, right arm, bring that value to one, and then go back to animation and paste. So we've got everything following the torso. So now the next step on this process and the next step in this workflow is actually to get the character attached to the cube itself because we want to make sure that this character is following exactly with the cube's movement. So to do this, I want to go to my torso control here. I want to go down to the bone constraint properties. One thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that you aren't adding this constraint on the object constraint properties. That's a mistake I make pretty often in Blender is that I'm not paying attention to the constraint property panel that I'm in, and I might be actually in the object constraint properties. You can see they look basically the same. It just changes from object or bone. If you're in object constraints and you are using a rig like this, the constraints aren't gonna work. So you wanna make sure you are in bone constraint. I'm gonna go to the relationship and I'm gonna do child of, and then I'm just gonna pick the cube object. And then there we go. So we've attached We've attached the control curve to the cube, and now you can see it's following the cube's movement. And this is the sort of like action figure movement that we're getting. We're getting the entire character moving. So the feet you can see here are going through the ground, but we are getting the overall movement that we want. So this is exactly what we want for this. So we're almost there into sort of finishing off this workflow. So with this workflow, once I have the character rig attached to the cube, which you've probably seen in my other videos, is that the next step that I wanna make sure that I do is I want to get these feet back into their normal IK world space, but I wanna keep all the information that I have here. So all the position information that it's giving us with the feet in local space, you can see it's following the torso. So we're actually getting you know, the position that we want, the feet, even though they're flying in the air, they're still following the torso and you can see they're landing in that exact same idle pose at the end, which is exactly what we want. If the IK feet were in world space and we did this, the feet would be staying where they're at. They would not be moving off this and then the body would just be moving and you would have your, have your feet stuck in place. Um, so we definitely don't want that. So we still wanna keep all this movement, but we wanna make sure that we can bring these back to legs behaving as they should. So if I move the torso, I still want the legs to say, stay planted. So to do this, we need to add in a few empty objects or locators so that we can take the information that we're getting from the control and then getting it back onto the IK foot when it's in world space. So to do this, I'm gonna press Shift A in object mode. I'm gonna to go to empty and I'll just do plain axis and then I can name this L foot for left foot. And then I wanna do the same thing. I wanna go into pose mode here 
and I want to copy the global transform of that foot. I want to paste it on the empty and I can actually scale it down a little bit. Doesn't need to be that big. I'm gonna press shift A, add another empty. I'm gonna name this our foot. And then I want to grab the foot control on the right, copy the global transform. And then I want to paste. All right, so we've now got that paste and I could scale it down as well. So now these locators are in the exact position of the feet as well. So now what we wanna do is get the locators attached to the feet. So I'm gonna select this left locator and this is the locator. So we're gonna work with the object constraint properties. I'm gonna to go to child of, I'm gonna to go to my picker and I'm gonna choose the Lisa rig and then I'm gonna type in foot and find the, let's see, the IK foot left. And you can see my locator is gonna pop off. I just need to choose set inverse to snap it back. And I'm just gonna double check and make this work, make sure this works. So now you can see if I move my foot, that locator is following along. I'm gonna do the same for the locator on the right foot, object constraints, go to child of, and then I'm gonna to go to the Lisa rig, and then I'm gonna type in foot and choose the IK foot right, set inverse, and now we've got that locator following the foot. So the next thing that we need to do is bake off the animation that's currently on the locators. So you can see the locators are following the foot's movement, but we don't have any keyframes on here. If we look at the location under the transform properties, you can see they're staying exactly the same to where they were constrained. So they're moving in 3D space, but we don't actually have any values for that. And we need to use these locators to basically get the feet back into world space and then attach the feet to the locator's movement to get this same information. It is a little bit of a long process inside of Blender. Maya does have easier ways to do this with Animbot or the World Bake plugin that you've seen me use inside of Maya. But this is a little bit more of a manual process. So what I'm gonna do is go and select the locator here on the left foot. I'm gonna go to Object and I'm gonna go to Animation, Bake Action. All right, and there's a couple things that we need to make sure that we do. We need to make sure that we turn visual keying on. That way it will bake this properly. So since this is constrained to the foot, since you saw that we don't actually have any change in values in any of our transform or rotation, this wouldn't bake off properly because it doesn't have any values to bake. So we need to make sure that we turn on visual keying. You can see it says with constraints applied. So if you have a constraint, and you wanna make sure you bake that information, you wanna make sure you turn on visual keying. We can go ahead and do clear constraints as well, so we'll just remove this constraint. And everything else should be fine. One thing that we can do is that by default, it's set to a value of one on the frame step. So that means it's going to bake this off every one frame. So we can keep this like this, although it's gonna add a ton of keyframes into our timeline. The animation is pretty simple. We don't actually need that many keyframes, so we can just type in a value of four, and I'll just bake this on every fourth frame. You even could do maybe like every fifth frame, every sixth frame. You can just find what works for you, and I think I actually done, I think I accidentally removed that, so let me open that up. Popped off there, visual keying, clear constraints. I'm gonna set this to a value of four, and then I'll hit okay. All right, so that should work. Now you can see that we have keyframes on this locator and you can see that baking it off on fours it's not following exactly with the foot's movement but that's completely fine we really just want to get the basic movement of the foot we don't need to have it attached completely one-to-one -one. we are working really rough with this too so having fewer keyframes is i find a little bit simpler to work with so i'll just keep it like that and then i'm going to right foot i'm going to go to object animation bake action visual keying only selected bones frame step clear constraints and then all right, so bake that off, clear the constraint. All right, so there we go. So we've got these locators or these empty objects moving. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get the foot controls back on to world space and then attach them to the constraint so it follows their movement. So I wanna come down here to the left leg. Now, before I change this torso parent switch to one, I'm gonna to go to animation, do what we did before, I'm gonna copy its position, go back to item, I'm gonna to go to the left leg, turn that to zero, go back to animation, paste, and then I'm gonna do the same on this foot, so I'm gonna copy its position, go to item, right leg, torso, parent switch to zero, animation, paste. 
So now you can see the feet are back on world space. And if I play this, you can see the feet are doing what they would be doing if they were in world space right at the beginning. The feet are staying in their position and the body's moving. But now we just need to get them attached to the locators. So what I wanna do is go over to the left foot. I wanna to go to bone constraint properties. And then I'm gonna to go to add bone constraint child of, and then I'm gonna select this left foot locator. And now you can see the control is following the locator's movement. Same for the right foot, bone constraint, child of, choose the target, pick the right foot, empty your locator. And then there we go. So we've got the foot or the legs following the locators, but they're actually in world space. So we've kept all that same animation, but now we can actually animate this in the way that you would expect with the legs in world space. So the last thing that we need to do is bake this animation off of the foot control. So I'm gonna select this foot control, shift select the right foot. We can do these together. I'm gonna go to pose, animation, bake action, only selected bones, visual keying, clear constraints, on fours, click okay. And then now we can actually delete these empties. Should keep all that information. We've actually put these to keyframes, but now we can move the torso around and have it behave how we want. Now we can come in here and actually start animating the feet. So we can come in here and go to pose and then maybe go to frame two, paste pose, and those feet are gonna stay locked on the floor. And then you can actually go in here and start animating the legs. So this is the process inside of Blender to work with the same workflow that I use for a lot of my body mechanic shots. You can see it's a little bit longer of a process than in Maya because Maya has things like Animbot and a few other plugins that make it just a little bit easier. So this is more of the manual method, but you can see you can do it just fine inside of Blender. It just takes a little bit more time to set up. So if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more future content. Thanks for watching.